Nearly anywhere you go in the world, it's likely that alcohol will be nearby. Whether you chug it, sip it, bong it, love it, or hate it, you're definitely familiar with this psychoactive drug. At the molecular level, it's nothing more than a hydroxyl bonded to a carbon atom. But this small molecule is responsible for vast behavioral changes that make for mostly a good time. So how does alcohol affect our brains? That's a complex question. Contrary to popular belief, alcohol actually depresses the central nervous system. This is because alcohol molecules bind to GABA receptor proteins. GABA is the nervous system's most significant inhibitory molecule. So when alcohol acts, the central nervous system becomes inhibited or decreases its activity. For this reason, alcohol was used as an anesthetic in the 1800s. <laughs> Behavioral effects begin to occur, for better or worse, after a couple of drinks. But if alcohol is a depressant, then why do people become more animated as they drink? <coughs> GABA also inhibits subcortical structures deep in your brain that normally would prohibit you from acting on your impulses. At a blood alcohol concentration, or BAC, of 0.04, decreases in anxiety and social pressures are apparent. This is when people become more talkative, outgoing, and generally happier. However, by 0 .08, most people experience significantly impaired judgment, balance, and motor function. This is exacerbated by the prefrontal cortex not being fully developed in young adults. At a BAC of 0.12, a person's natural vomiting center is activated. However, slow, steady drinking can overcome this, allowing a person to reach the lethal dose around a BAC of 0.4. At 0.15, speech begins to be slurred, and there is major motor impairment. Blackouts can also begin at this level, as GABA inhibits the hippocampus responsible for memories. As one passes 0.3, they're approaching a comatose state, and beyond that, possible death. Sudden death from an alcohol overdose is actually due to respiratory failure, as a critical brainstem region called the medulla becomes so depressed that it stops functioning. The medulla performs critical jobs such as respiration, cardiac function, blood pressure, and some reflex centers, including vomiting and swallowing. If you've ever reached any of these points, then you definitely know about the aftermath, hangovers. Hangover is the term given to the resulting symptoms from ethanol's toxic effects on the brain. These symptoms include headache, nausea, tremors, and poor balance, and are made worse by the inevitable dehydration that follows a drinking session. Your bladder excretes around four times as much water for every pint-sized drink you consume. If you are hungover, coffee may not be your best option. Coffee can cause dehydration, which will only worsen your symptoms. In fact, coffee can raise your heart rate, which is already a byproduct of a hangover. But hangovers aren't forever. It's chronic exposure to alcohol that causes long-term consequences. New alcohol users may need to learn their limits, but over time, these limits can increase. This is what's called tolerance. Alcohol, tolerance is caused specifically by an increase in glutamate, the central nervous system's primary excitatory neurotransmitter. This glutamate combats the brain's increasing amount of inhibition, which of course is caused by the alcohol. Doesn't sound so bad, right? The brain adjusting to the problem? Once alcohol is taken away, the brain's inhibitory functioning returns to normal. Glutamate levels remain abnormally high, causing seizures, brain damage, and even excitotoxicity, a process in which overexcitement can damage or kill neurons. Now, we'll go through a few common theories about alcohol and binge drinking to explain whether they may or may not be true in a section we like to call myth or fact. You might have heard it said, or even noticed, that women seem to get drunk easier than men. This, biologically speaking, is true. It is easier for women to reach a higher BAC because they simply have less overall mass and therefore a higher fat to muscle ratio. With less mass, there is less water for the alcohol to spread throughout the body, giving them a higher average alcohol concentration. Now. It's common knowledge that partying on an empty stomach will cause you to get drunk faster than if you're full. This actually is true. Most of the absorption of alcohol happens in the small intestine, and the stomach passes its contents to the small intestine quicker when empty. High concentration drinks actually slow down absorption, and any drinks at 30% or higher alcohol by volume, most hard liquors, irritate the stomach and directly slow its emptying, causing a longer period of intoxication. So be careful with hard liquor or mixed drinks. 
ever take an aspirin to prevent a hangover? The common belief that this will help reduce hangover effects is a myth. It probably won't help you. Aspirin inhibits an enzyme in the intestine that breaks down some of the alcohol prior to absorption. Therefore, aspirin can actually increase BAC faster. There you have it. There is some fact and fiction in those partying rumors you've been hearing since freshman year. And if you're curious about more, don't forget to comment below.